Hi, this is Dr. Stephen Park at drstephenpark.com. Today we're going to talk about a link between sleep apnea and diabetes, which is confirmed again. It's almost a given that you see headlines regarding sleep apnea every few days about how it's linked with heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, weight gain, and sudden death. Unfortunately, it's gotten to a point where you're likely to yawn at these findings because you're so inundated with more interesting medical news or other celebrity media stories. Bare minimum, you might glance at the brief article and think, that's interesting, and then go on to the next story. Recently, there's been news about the National Transportation and Safety Board making recommendations about mandatory screening for all commercial airline pilots, commercial truck drivers, ship pilots, and transit train operators. In light of the many recent events, including pilots that fall asleep and miss their destinations due to undiagnosed sleep apnea, yawn. A recent Johns Hopkins study showed that if you have severe sleep apnea, you have a 46% increased risk of dying compared with those that have mild to moderate sleep apnea. Again, yawn. We already know this information. Sleep apnea patients have a much higher risk of dying from heart attacks and strokes. A study now shows that your risk of developing diabetes is two to three times higher if you have severe sleep apnea and if you have daytime sleepiness. We already know that sleep apnea is independently linked to diabetes. I guarantee that many more studies will be released um, repeating these same findings over and over again, linking or associating one variable to sleep apnea without flat out saying that one causes the other. I wonder what it'll take to significantly elevate sleep apnea awareness in this country. Celebrities with sleep apnea? We already have a few including Rosie and Regis. Politicians with sleep apnea? With the Congress being mostly older men, I'm guessing about a third to half of our leaders have at least some degree of sleep apnea. What can we do or what has to be done to take sleep apnea awareness, diagnosis, and treatment to a new level? I'd like to know. Please send me your comments on my blog at drsevenpark.com.